Platformers have been around for a very long time. Some of the first games on the arcade were 2D platformers like Donkey Kong okay. and Space Panic. The genre had some time to grow from the 1980s to now. Games that were inspired by Sonic and Mario came around and did their thing. In the 2D platforming genre, like Metroid, being an early on addition to the run and gun platforming that we are now familiar with. While shooting everything on screen, you had to move around and avoiding projectiles or attacks coming at you. Sound like anything else? There are some unique platformers I would like to talk about. They're an unknown, quite the opposite. <laughs> Celeste back in 2018 was nominated for Game of the Year. Did it win? For Hell Game no. Game of the Year goes to God of War. Red Dead Redemption 2, God of War, and Spider-Man all came out that year. However, Celeste made a mark on the platforming scene for its uniqueness. Booting up the game, you can already see the beautiful art style the game went for. This game introduces the dash mechanic. This means when you activate the move, you are sent a direction you want to go. However, you are only allowed to do this once in the air, and you can do it again if you touch the ground. But now, just from this simple mechanic, you're given so much freedom with how you move. As you literally climb through the story, because apparently you're climbing up a mountain, you learn new tricks. You aren't given new moves, but you are given new obstacles walls to bounce off of, these traffic light things that send you flying when you dash, goo crap that will spawn when you step on this surface, which makes it so you can't step on that part again. This game also does one of the rawest things ever, it introduces a whole new trick on the very last level. You might already learn how to do this throughout the game, but you were taught how to wave dash. The wave dash is a mechanic that has been popularized with Super Smash Bros. Melee. And it was originally a mistake in the game, however, the competitive scene of the game took this and made it ingrained in Who's what the game is today. Takes aim. Oh, he gets a and Hungry Box takes it, toss the chair, get out of here! And for Celeste to give you a tutorial about this on the very last level of the game is absolutely bonkers. And it doesn't even stop there. You're also introduced to a lot more obstacles that are a constant throughout this level. Like, in one of the levels, your friend Theo gets trapped in this crystal thing. Now you have to carry him out of the dungeon you're in, and while carrying him, your movement is limited. However, you learn to maneuver this area with this restriction. Or, there's also this bubble thing that makes a I can talk about this game for hours and expect a video about this game, so subscribe. Another game that's crazy unique is one of the most underrated games ever, Rayman Origins and Rayman Legends. Origin is as good as Legends, I think Legends is more polished with everything that Origin did well. Oh my god. <laughs> Black woman, please control me. What? With a beautiful art style that looks like it's straight out of a picture book, these games not only carry charm, but a quick run and gun without the gun. The animations are different for each and every character, but you're running around breaking into anything and boxing any enemy in their sight. You have movement options like gliding, sliding, a dash attack, and all these moves flow right into each other perfectly. This game is all about fluidity and flow. All the tools to maneuver these levels, with each tool carrying the same speed as the last. Like if you're on a slant and you jump while holding down, you start rolling down the hill, and when you get up, you start carrying that momentum that was given. The aim around this game is flow, and it works really well. This is a really nice game for turning off your brain and playing the game. After you've been playing this game for a while, you'll start looking like you've played these levels before. And I would personally blame the amazing level design for this. The levels are designed for you to be fast and quick and make last second decisions and all around perfect movement. This game also has a multiplayer function, but sadly no online playability. And oh my god, the music of this game is amazing.
There are also music levels like Mario Wonder, where everything you maneuver is on beat. And levels like these are so creative and a joy to play on. I don't know what Christoph Harold, the composer for this game, was cooking, but I wouldn't be surprised if the studio burnt down. This isn't really the video to talk about music. I have a whole video top right of your screen if you're interested though. Katana Zero is another pixelated 2D platformer I want to talk about. I picked up this game recently, and it's been a blast to play. Unlike the other games that focus on platforming, this game's gimmick is the fun and exhilarating combat. We play as a samurai and we follow him with a fairly confusing story, with our therapist injecting the samurai with some drug. I'm not gonna lie, I couldn't pay attention to the story. I was playing this game until like 3 a.m. on a Discord call after drinking an entire bottle of gamer subs. Please sponsor me, by the way. Anyway, we run through rooms, slicing through enemies, and you have this slow mo mechanic that helps you maneuver this really fast gameplay. It allows you to see everything around you and act. This game is like if Ultra Kill was a 2D game, and instead of a gun, you have a katana. In these rooms, there are many pathways and different enemies, and through retry after retry, you learn new routes, and just little things about that room. Trial and error, you learn to dodge a bullet because after you kick down a door and kill the closest guy next to you, you know the person across the room has a shotgun and shoots you as soon as you kill that guy, so you have to deflect the bullet or dodge it. The great thing about this game is that it makes you think. You can't aimlessly swing your sword around or be forever in slow-mo because you can't swing your sword so quickly and your slow-mo meter has to regenerate before you can use it again. This game is good fun with a story that has a lot of big words that I physically cannot pay attention to. But what about a game with no big story? Jump King is a game not known for its story, but for its very difficult platforming. At the time of this recording, I still haven't made it to the top. It's too hard. I literally did this starting section so many times that I know what to do with my eyes closed. The way you platform this game is so different from anything else I've seen. You have to hold down the jump button and pick a direction to go in. You can't change your direction mid-air or try to drift into a direction. If you decide to jump straight up, you're only going straight up and straight down. This game was made in mind to be hard, and accomplished it very well. Another thing about this game is that there's no checkpoints. Usually in games there would be a point in the game where you'd automatically get set back to a point of the level and die or something. But in this, if you fall, you're all the way back down to the bottom. 2D platformers are a constant genre in the gaming industry, and it's not going away anytime soon. There's still so many fresh ideas that other games can tap into, and if you have any recommendations for 2D platformers, please let me know. Maybe I'll make a part 2 to this video.